Hi, everybody. Welcome to week 24 of our Believe series. I'm Pastor Paul. And I'm Pastor Steve. We are talking about self-control this week. And I was thinking about this earlier this week, and I thought, what would I rather preach on, self-control or money? And I kind of would rather preach on money because <laughs> I think uh, self-control is one of those subjects that we struggle with. You know, these virtues, I don't know if we've talked about this yet, but these virtues uh, come from the Apostle Paul's letter to the Galatians. And mm -hmm. if you go to chapter 5 there, I think it's chapter 5, yeah, chapter 5, he lists them there, and they're kind of in order. And one of them amongst the, the list of love and peace and joy is self-control. And I think we like love, we like joy, we like peace. And then we get to self-control, and we're like, really? Really? Doesn't that take all the fun out of everything? Yeah. And self-control really does hit all kinds of aspects of our life. It even hits the, the aspect of money. Um, and so in some ways, as you're talking about self-control, it, it is an all-encompassing thing around our lives. And our society has a really difficult time with that, whether it's self-control over how we eat. We've got a huge obesity problem. We're, we're not very self-controlled in how we, uh, how we handle that or how we uh, go about um, handling our finances and, and the amount of debt that people take. They're not self-controlled enough. And how many bankruptcies do people have to declare or houses being foreclosed on? Uh, challenging times like that, which certainly circumstances can play into it. But uh, how self-controlled are we? Yeah. And it's easy to have, you know, conversations about this and talk about, is it, is it instant gratification that we struggle with? Is it this idea that we're all entitled to something? Uh, you know, we could have these conversations about our society, about self-control, but I think Steve hit it pretty well in the head that we, we live in a society that self-control is probably not our top virtue. And it certainly has spilled into the Christian church as well. And I personally think of, of all these virtues, self-control is one of those on the top of my list that I think that we could use more of uh, as a church to model to society. Not so much, you know, I think sometimes we think self-control, well, does that mean that all the fun in life is taken away? Not at all, actually. Uh, it just means that we look different than society, so that society looks at us and say, how come your life is so full of love, peace, and joy? And a lot of times the answer will be, well, because of self-control. Yeah, when we take a look at uh, instant gratification, that's the kind of society we live in. Immediately we're looking for responses through uh, hits on the, on the internet or, you know, my goodness, we can, we can instantly stream movies and all of these other things that are so immediately at our, uh, at our fingertips. We've lost a sense of uh, delayed gratification, that we would work hard towards a goal and, and accomplish something because it's really far out there. Um, and really, that's at the heart of the Christian life in understanding that whatever we face here in life, we've been given um, a, a great reward in heaven. And that is, you know, as far as the greatest delayed gratification, I mean, that, that's really what we're talking about. And so in light of that, we're called to live a controlled life. Yeah, yeah. And when we talk about a controlled life, a self-controlled life as Christians, really it's a God-controlled life. I think self-control for Christians is the same thing as God-controlled. We're constantly um, looking to the Lord and saying, how are you leading my life? What do you want to do in my life? How do I need to respond to your, your love in my life? And I think a lot of times that, that looks like uh, self-control in our lives. I know that one of the questions that we're looking at this week is uh, on page... 188? Yeah, I was thinking of that one. Yeah, describe someone in your life who amazes you with his or her ability to maintain self-control. I know for me it's important to have models in my life that uh, give me examples of self-control because sometimes I'm not very self-controlled. And so uh, I know two people in my life. I certainly think my father is a very self-controlled uh, person. He always tells me I need to have more compassion and he could probably add self-control to the list and things <laughs> like that. But you know, my dad certainly is an example of that. I think David Franzmeyer, many of you know him. He's a pastor who has served at Love of Christ. He's a very self-controlled uh, person. And I look to those two as very much as saying, it would be nice to model my life after them on some level. 
I want to say the uh, people that, that come to mind, uh, my vicarage supervisor was a very self-controlled uh, man. He was very deliberate about all the things he did in his life. And that, I mean, that's really the, the self-control thing is, is marking things out, setting time aside for, for specific things, whether it was working out, spending time with God, spending time with his wife. I mean, he was, he was very deliberate about all those things. And then also there's a, a, a longtime missionary in our congregation in, in Illinois, and uh, they had been in uh, Africa for 35 years, and he translated the Bible into with a, with a whole team, but he was the lead translator, into a new language. And talk about self-control. I mean, for 30 mm-hmm. years, working diligently towards an end goal, delayed gratification. This is before computers. They had to hand-type things, send the manuscript back to the United States. I mean, unbelievable. A three-decade process. Um, and that That's really self-control. And so those two I, I, I look up to and say, man, these guys had an amazing self-control. Yeah. So we have those people in our lives that we certainly can look to for self-control. This is Easter week coming up here, so when you're watching this film, uh, <laughs> most likely Palm Sunday has happened, and we're heading toward, toward Maundy Thursday and Good Friday and Easter. And uh, our ultimate example of self-control is Jesus. And I'm always amazed uh, when it comes to Holy Week at the self-control that Jesus displays starting from Palm Sunday where people are laying down branches for him and cloaks and and hailing him as king, Mm -hmm. yet he comes in on a donkey, yet he comes in as a servant, Um, to Maundy Thursday where he's got a man who's going to betray him to death, yet he gives his disciples uh, this great gift of Holy Communion. He washes their feet to Good Friday even when he's about to be crucified. And uh, one of the things that Jesus says is that, you know, this power that's been given to you to crucify me, he's talking to Pilate and to the leaders, uh, it wouldn't be given to you unless my father had given it to you. I I could call a legion of angels at any moment and be done with this. And I think of the self-control that he had to die for sinners such as me. Yeah, absolutely. That that self-control and in saying it, you know, I think it starts in, the, in that Garden of Gethsemane, and, and John records, you know, Jesus saying, hey, if this cup could pass from me, uh, let, let's do it that way, God, but not my will, your will be done. And maybe that's really the secret towards yeah. self-control, yeah. And is, is really submitting our will to God's will and saying, your will be done. We pray it in the Lord's Prayer all the time. It's really self-control. God, your will be done. Help me be about your will in my life now and, uh, and, and always, so. So this week, as, as you uh, maybe meet for a small group, maybe you're taking a week off because it's Holy Week, uh, whatever the case may be, my encouragement to you would be to think about uh, the self-control that Jesus exhibits this week, going to the cross for you and for me, and then maybe we can take some time this week to think about our own self-control and to focus on that this week, on this virtue uh, as we go through chapter 24. I think that's about it. Have a great Holy Week. Talk to you next week. God bless.